This shirt is way too small for me, and I'm probably only going to be wearing it for this one video, but if it's going to be any one video, it may as well be this one. Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old, and today we're talking about the fifth album from BT, This Binary Universe. Well, here we are. We've made it to the last ten. <laughs> I don't think that's a spoiler, fairly certain I've mentioned this in multiple previous videos before, but may as well talk about this highest honor. So far only three albums I've ever heard in my life got the 10 out of 10 score. Orbital Insides, this one, and uh, 808 State Down Solaris. And yes, I did say that uh, this is the last one. Uh, I, I mean, I suppose it is technically possible for another 10 to come sometime in the future, but I wouldn't hold your breath for it. And it likely will never be applied to a brand new album, because... Thing is, a big part of what goes into consideration for this score is an album's longevity and its ability to resonate strongly with me over the course of a very long period of time. This Binary Universe is actually the 10 out of 10 album of mine that I most recently heard for the first time. I first heard it back in high school, while still in my ongoing search for uh, more artists that sound like hybrid and sounds from the ground. But by the time I picked up this Binary Universe, I'd already heard all the other BT albums that had been released at that point, up through a song Across Wires. The nostalgia factor isn't as strong here as it might be for other albums of his, especially his next one. And if this review uh, would have come from my perspective after only hearing the album like two or three times, I'd say it's just a unique sounding downtempo album with three tracks I really like. Uh, Internal Locus, Antikythera Mechanism, and Good Morning Gaia. But the rest just completely blends together and just overall does not reach true greatness for me. This binary universe needed to grow on me. It was not an instant classic. But I did eventually decide that it was a 10 in the early days of this channel's existence, before deciding since I left you or Don Solaris were 10s despite knowing them longer. This Binary Universe is just an album that delivers pretty much everything I enjoy in electronic music and sums up my particular taste ridiculously well. It's a primarily down-tempo and ambient album that also happens to implement elements of jazz, rock, IDM, soundtrack music, whatever applicable, with tracks that all all stretch on really long, like the two shortest being a little past the 8 minute mark and all the others being over 10 minutes, and are all structured in strange and unconventional ways, but they're all still really emotionally charged and have an insane attention to detail. All of BT's previous albums could fairly easily be linked to specific scenes in electronic and pop music at the time of their release. But this binary universe is its own wholly unique experience that only BT could have come up with. Well, okay, he's admittedly not the only credit here either, uh, but there's only two other contributors. Uh, his assistant, Mike DiMaggio, who helped come up with some particular musical passages, and Brian Trifon, uh, who played most of the guitar parts and did some additional programming in various parts. By the way, the latter has put out some interesting material with his brother in the band Trifonic, which is pretty stylistically similar to what we have in here in this album. So that's definitely some stuff worth checking out as well, but I digress. Point is, aside from Trifonic and BT's later stuff in this mold, you're not going to find anything that sounds quite like this binary universe. And to me, this is still the best iteration of this down-tempo style he's done to date. It's an album that goes for titanically huge atmospherics, but doesn't really do it in a particularly epic and dramatic way as you might find on, say, a Solar Fields project. Maybe there's a little bit of that, but the album seems more concerned with tiny details and idiosyncrasies. Going about it in a more subtle way, made up of so many smaller elements that seem to operate on a microscopic level. Now, I will admit the reason this album took a while to grow on me is because the seven pieces here are all really stylistically similar and move at pretty much the exact same pace and tempo, to the point of blending together pretty well. But by this point, I've heard the album so much that I can tell each of them apart from a distance, and yet despite my many lessons over the years, I, can, I still feel like there's so much detail in this album that I haven't familiarized myself with. I can easily remember the tune to pretty much every single little part of this album and have a muscle memory of when everything happens, but it's so sonically dense that it's not the kind of thing that I can just play back in my memory. 
May as well go down each track individually. We open with All That Makes Us Human Continues. Tasked with setting the tone for the album, and it does that magnificently. Starts with a cloud of totally reverb-soaked guitars that sounds awesome. Best experience at high volume so you can really immerse yourself in it. But then it slowly transitions into this delicate soundtrack-ish piece with warm shifting synth pads, little bell melodies chiming, do 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 do, and lots of little micro-edited noises. But about halfway in, some of the warmer elements fall away, and it crescendos into this really big sounding build-up, and it pays off into a total beat switch into a more rock influence section with all these warm guitar patterns. <laughs> That is not how you play guitar. And some more tangible percussion patterns that hit a lot harder, uh, but are still kind of strange and offbeat. But, and still containing lots of micro-edited effects all over the place. Then eventually it goes in this really long crossfade back into the sounds of that first section. And it's like two measures off so that it still syncs up beat-wise, but still kind of catches you off guard a little bit, like you were tapping your foot to the wrong beat or something, even though you weren't. And then finally ends with everything drowning in that cloud of reverb, kind of where we started, and bringing it around full circle. And that's just the first track. All That Makes Us Human Continues could very well be an incredible closer to any other BT album, but here it's just the beginning. Just getting you acclimated to the sounds and styles you'll be hearing on this album. And the amazing sound design only escalates on the next track, Dynamic Symmetry, starting out with a lot of peaceful ambient pads and the sounds of distant thunder rumbling, uh, eventually fading in a progression of little synth chiming and what sounds like a baby cooing, all building up to this hard-hitting breakbeat coming in underneath. It's pretty loud and almost maybe kind of Chemical Brothers-ish, but contrasting with all those bell-like synths on top, which give it a much more nocturnal and kind of delicate feel despite the banging beat, do, 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 do. And of course, there's no shortage of sidetracks dedicated to micro editing and strange effects. Also, about five and a half minutes into the track, there's a new hook introduced and is switched into a much jazzier sound with its shuffling acoustic cymbal noises and light piano chords, but converted into an old timey sounding sample and chopped up into pieces. Do, do, do. Pretty much the whole time, by the way, it's set to a 9-4 time signature, subdivided differently depending on which section of the track we're talking about. BT really likes using weird time signatures all over this album, just to add more of that strangeness factor. I feel like I've only talked about 5-6 minutes of this 11 minute piece, which has so many interesting ideas and sidetracks packed into it, but the, the video's already gonna be way too freaking long since we're only on the second track here. This is the kind of level we're operating on here, and those first two aren't even my biggest favorites from this album. The Internal Locus, however, that was one that pretty immediately resonated with me, even on my first couple of listens. That was one of my biggest favorites, for sure. It starts out really subtle, with some just some rain sound effects and a really low-key synth pad. I, I know BT loves using field recordings, and they, f they really feel like they serve a purpose on this album in particular. There's no editing on the rain, but you can make the parallel between these totally unedited organic sounds from nature with BT's messing about with electronic effects that can often have a similar final effect. Reminds you that even the world around you is filled with all these fascinating tiny details that you can pick up on if you want to. I haven't even started talking about the actual music in this track though, I just know that's something that BT would like people to think about. Anyways, a minute into this track we go into a stripped back piano piece, uh, just playing some simple chords. Do, 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 do. Well, maybe not musically simple, it's not like C major or that kind of thing. I don't really know what chords they are, but there is a lot of emotional resonance contained within them. Later it switches over to a melody played on some xylophones, and accompanied by lots of orchestral sounds, string pads and rolling drums, and 
cello solos and castanets. <laughs> now anything that utilizes those kinds of xylophone or vibraphone or marimba or whatever, that kind of sounds automatically going to get my attention and that particular section gr really grabbed me right away. And it's really dynamic and fast moving despite the not particularly fast tempo, switching from subtle and laid back and to dramatic and epic at the drop of a hat, but never to the point of feeling unearned. It's basically a complicated soundtrack piece that feels like it could accompany a family movie about some little kid dreaming about pirate ships or something. And that's also not including the section near the end, which switches over to some more mechanical and kind of foot-tapping electronic beat. And the very end, which is just piano and rain like we started. I could write like an entire essay on each track individually. Like, there's so much in here and I love every single second in it. Let's move on to 1.618, named after the golden ratio that is present in so many things in nature. This admittedly wasn't a huge standout to me the first few times I heard this album, but the fact that it was highlighted on Electronic Opus helped make it stand out more in my mind. And the fact that I had been following the Kickstarter for that project quite a while before it was released, it had plenty of time to cement itself into my life more. Structurally, it's pretty similar to Dynamic Symmetry, albeit with a lot more guitars. It's got long ambient stretches, lots of stuttering and editing as per usual, but anytime the guitars come in are really among the most iconic parts of the whole album. The first guitar loop has really become super catchy to me. Do, do, do. And the satellite-esque change-up at the end in 7-4 time is equally as important to me. And the use of the guitars all over this track is really creative and interesting. Sometimes it feels like a bit of an, it has a bit of an Asian flair to it and you can get the guitars to almost chime like bells. It's pretty amazing. And also shout out again to uh, Brian Trifon who likely played a big part in this particular one. Then there's See You on the Other Side. Now, this is the longest piece on the album at over 14 minutes, and admittedly, if you put a gun to my head and told me to pick a least favorite on this album, for a long time I would have picked this one. Mainly on the merits that it doesn't feel like it's quite as packed with the same level of substance that other tracks on here do, and doesn't sonically stand out as much as some of the others. But no one's putting a gun to my head and forcing me to make this decision, so I'll say I love this one too, and it's even grown on me especially in the last couple of days just examining it for the review. By the standards of this album, it's admittedly pretty simple, straightforward and repetitive, cons mostly consisting of loops running in 11-4 time. Do 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 Slowly piling one loop and instrument on top of another. First just chiming bells, then pianos and guitars later on. Just running without any side tracks or over-reliance on micro-editing effects. I mean, of course, there's still micro-editing in some little places, as there, are, as there always is on here, but it's not the focus in this particular piece. And it is kind of a two-parter as well, with the second part coming in a good eight, nine minutes in or so. That brings a slightly more straightforward 4-4 four, four beat subdivided in a 3-3-2 three, three, rhythm, which I probably made sound more fancy than it actually is, but it still sounds pretty cool. This actually started to become one of the more emotional moments on this album for me, despite not being as impressive as other moments on here. Uh, speaking of impressive, let's move on to the anti kythera mechanism. Fucking hell. The anti kythera mechanism is so incredible, I have, like, no words. And by no words, I mean I have way too many words. As with every piece on here, we start out small, just mostly formless piano chords echoing out in the distance and floating on a subtle reverby pad. A minute and a half, we uh, switch over to this really lonely and melancholy combination of piano and some kind of twinkling electron electric piano sound. Do do do, do do do, do do do. It's just this one little moment, but it's so emotionally resonant. One of the emotional high points on this whole album. And it also falls into this progression of guitar chords that surround it in some warmth. Do, 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 do. There's little banjos in the background too. 
and there's long stretches of this track that are dedicated to editing and effects because of course there is. But does give it that kind of uh, mechanical feel, but keeping the melodies around in parts to give these sections a bit of a sense of childlike wonder to them. And did I mention the freaking 110 piece orchestra on here? Okay, that was actually pretty prominent on the internal locus as well, but on this track it's way more dramatic and loud and bombastic. Like, shit really goes down six and a half minutes in, really creating a sense of danger now. And it's so absolutely captivating and just keeps me on the edge of my seat. There's more mechanical editing and effects, and then the big orchestral climax reappears again, but this time totally glitched out and edited up into oblivion to get your pulse racing even more. And finally, it just ends with all those effects just getting cut off and all the leftover elements flying out into the distance. God, I don't even... It's so climactic and so stunning and oh, I love it so much. Funny story, this particular track was a giant inspiration on a track from my own Spiral Out of Control album called Sacred Geometry. I also wanted to make something super big and impressive with all these bombastic orchestral noises and weird ambient side tracks like this track delivered on. Granted, I don't know, I, I don't think I executed it nearly as well as what was on here, and some people have told me that track was a bit of a mess, but never mind. I just felt like shameless plugging there. Alright, so that leaves one final track to talk about. We've had so much insanity and micro-level detail all over the place, and it's been such a brain-bending experience. And with the anti-Cathera mechanism, BT's hit what should surely be the most mind-blowingly impressive stretch of the album so far. How would you end an album like this? Well, as with every track on here, and with the album as a whole, we start out subtle, and we end subtle. That brings us to Good Morning Kaya, which I think is actually my favorite track on the album, period. If you're wondering who Kaya is, that's BT's daughter. Uh, during the composition of this album, she was only a baby, and unsurprisingly, BT becoming a father was a big part of the inspiration for creating this album in the first place. Apparently, baby Kaya was even in BT's lap for a lot of the sessions he made putting these tracks together. So this track is, of course, the most direct tribute to her, and it's an absolute emotional gut punch. Outright makes me tear up pretty much every time I hear it, and especially after listening to the whole album in one go. There's not really much crazy editing on this track, it's kept to a minimum to let the traditional instrumentation stay in focus. It just starts out with simple piano melodies accompanied by ocean sound effects, but then slowly reveals itself to be this big, like, Godspeed you Black Emperor type post-rock piece that just absolutely soars over the top. This track I actually have no words for, it's just freaking beautiful. So now that I've discussed every track individually, guess what, we're still not done. I gotta mention the fact that this album comes packaged with a DVD that has music videos for all seven tracks on here. And okay, I'll keep this part brief, because uh, the videos here pretty clearly come secondary to the music and are not remotely essential to enjoying the album. But I guess they do fit the unconventional nature of the music itself. None of the videos tell any linear story or really fit together in any way. A lot of them are just there to show off uh, fancy, cool-looking experimental effects. For instance, the All That Makes Us Human Continues video mainly shows uh, just a single shot looking at, like, I don't know, the underside of a railway in a city or something, with lots of flickering lights and effects all over it to make you sure you, you don't really know what you're looking at. And the shot, like, never moves, except for, like, one short part for like halfway through. And 1.618's video shows the golden ratio a lot, and has this part where it just zooms in on the, like the golden rectangle, but it's, oh, it's mostly just a lot of weird CGI imagery that's more like an iTunes visualizer than anything. The internal locust tries to tell a story out of still pictures with this weird William Joyce farmer dude and some robot that lives under his house, which is pretty cool. Uh, the anti cathera mechanism video shows this woman in a desert picking up a cube, and then the video just devolves into random effects after that. These videos are all pretty cool, but there there were there were only only two I really liked. Um, the dynamic symmetry one is great. It animated that weird iron giant bee thing on the album cover here, and it creates this weird like 
really cool looking stylized world with all these weird animated creatures. Uh, it is. It shows exactly the kind of imagery I associate with listening to this album. And the Good Morning Kaya video unsurprisingly features footage of BT with uh, baby Kaya and an on-screen message written to her scrolling across. Maybe kind of cheap emotional bay, but you know, <laughs> it really does work. It provides exactly the same effect that the song does, so yeah. But yeah, the music videos are all cool and fit the music, but none of them are essential viewing by any stretch. The album was not made any better to me by watching the videos, and in fact I'm more likely to fall asleep to the album if I'm watching the videos. But not like you could really improve upon this binary universe in any way, despite that. I still feel like I'm just kind of scratching the surface of things that could be said about this album. I could drop random trivia like how All That Makes Us Human Continues was apparently written in C sound through it like a text terminal. Or BT's utilization of circuit bending, i.e. rewiring electronic toys and making them short circuit so that they would make weird noises that he could use in the album. But this album is absolutely chock full of easter eggs like that. And that's just another part of what I love so much about this binary universe. So, now for closing thoughts. I suppose I can say that, um, I don't expect everyone to share my enthusiasm for this album. I had one guy tell me he didn't like some of the weirder sidetrack moments from other BT tracks outside of this album because they distracted from what they felt was the strongest elements of any given track. So. If BT's tendency to make tracks trail off from where they started and change into other things annoys you, uh, you probably won't be into this album. But I love tracks that evolve and have weird sidetracks and are strange and complicated like this. It's one of the qualities of BT's music that has kept me the most interested in him. And I love it when an artist like him, that could be making more commercial stuff as usual, instead takes a weird risk into something like this. And I love the particular styles that BT happened to explore on this show. And I love literally everything about this album. This Binary Universe is the perfect album for this weird, down-tempo and IDM-loving geek with ADD here, just to completely geek out over. And I can tell it was specifically designed to be geeked out over. But it can also work as pure background music to help you focus on something else entirely, or it can work as just hearing any of the seven tracks on here completely out of context individually, or best of all, it will work best as just listening the whole thing in one piece. And, uh... I think that's uh, finally about everything I have to say on the topic of this binary universe, which stands uh, behind only Orbitals and Sides as my favorite album of all time. So, um, I guess all I can say is, uh, thank you, BT, for this life-defining album. It's a 10 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list or make me review something, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.